disclaimer. Hello and welcome to Two Therapists and a Microphone. I am Dr. Harrison Davis. And I'm Dr. Aisha Dickerson. Two Therapists and a Microphone is a show about mental health, relationships, and social issues that personally affect you. And we broadcast live every Monday evening at 7 o'clock p.m. <laughs> <laughs> we are two licensed psychotherapists with decades of clinical experience, and we want to hear from you. We want to hear about situations or dilemmas that you're going through. So please send us your questions by visiting our website, www.twotherapist.com, and click on Ask Two Therapists at the top of the page. In fact, uh, next week, we're going to be moving into February and, you know, some of y'all might be having dating issues. So anyone who has questions about the current relationships they're in or relationships they want to be in, I want to encourage you to submit your question at twotherapist.com. We'll have another therapist on to join us and we'll see how we can help you. I, I, and I think it's wonderful to actually listen to people who are trained <laughs> to, <laughs> to provide you with some guidance. Uh, and today you guys can participate. <clears throat> you can put it in the chat, you know, within uh, Facebook, Twitter or YouTube. And I want to give you guys our text number that you can text. And I can actually send you the link to join the program if you dare. Our phone <laughs> number text is 404-913-1636. That's 404-913-1636. Go ahead and send us a text if you want to talk about our topic today. But first, I want to ask Aisha, how was your weekend? This, this weekend? Um, my weekend was, I, I don't want to call it boring, but remember I told you I was trying a little bit of everything and I've just continued to try. I'm learning what I'm good at and what I need to let go. So uh, yeah. that's it. It doesn't sound boring. <laughs> <laughs> but some of it was painful. Uh, so some of it I tried and I, and I didn't do what I was supposed to do because um, a lot of people don't know this about me, but I have issues following directions sometimes. I just want to jump out and do things the way I want to do them. So um, that's not always <laughs> the best way to do things when you're trying something new. So It makes it exciting, though, but I get you. Sometimes you got to step back and know what you're getting into. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I like, uh, having an instructor. <laughs> so, <laughs> I have instructors. I just, you know, if they take too long to explain, it's like, okay, I got it. Oh, no, that ain't me. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> when I went whitewater rafting a few years ago, uh, and I can't swim by the way, and <laughs> the Okoi river, the upper and the lower, it was thrilling. It was fun, but I did whatever that instructor told us to do. Mm. Uh, and I had my life jacket on too. So I hear you on that, but keep doing your thing then, you know, the, you. the new stuff you want to do. So yeah. my weekend, uh, mm -hmm. it was good. It was sobering a little bit. Sobering. Yeah. You know, I was excited about the football games, you know, okay. the playoffs to see who's going to make it to the Super Bowl. You know, congratulations to the Philadelphia Eagles and the Kansas City Chiefs. I think. Oh, it's so that's what it's going to be. I've, I've yep. gotten a little off track. You know, yeah, I like... think it's going to be an exciting game. Okay. Uh, I, I enjoy watching the game. Some little controversy uh, with the Kansas City Bengals game and the referees. But, you know, that's all part of the game. I need you to know. look that up. I have no idea what you're talking about right However, now. However, um, I was distracted this past weekend mm -hmm. by talk of the video okay. of the Memphis police officers beating uh, Tyree Nichols. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Um, And as you know, this weekend is when uh, this past week, rather, the five officers were arrested. Tyree Nichols was driving in his car and there's some uh, dispute. uh, Things are uh, the the, the reality of what happened (laughs) isn't dispute. Let me put it that way. And why the (laughs) and why the officers pulled him over. But in the end, they ended up beating him senselessly and he died i believe three days later um and so there was a lot of talk about it before they released the video and i said i didn't want to watch it i I was just about to ask you that like did you watch it because i think you and i have talked about uh the videos and racial trauma in that for for years now before it was uh, i mean it's always been before george floyd right right so I made a, a conscious decision maybe a couple of years ago that I just couldn't watch it anymore. And and I think the last one I watched, there was a teenage girl and she she didn't die, but there was a teenage girl that was um, beat up by a resource officer. And that mm. me having a teenager, her exact same age hit me so bad. Like I was hysterical. It was, I was like, okay, well that's the end. I can't watch those anymore. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think I remember that one too. And the George Floyd and the uh, insurrection, you mm-hmm. know, at the U.S. Capitol and people are dead. I made that conscious decision too to stop watching news for a while. I've jumped yeah. back in since the political season and Georgia elected to, I mean, a new senator. Um, but, you know, I said I was going to watch it, but people kept talking about it. And then people suggested that we make that the topic for tonight's show okay. as I'm listening to more and more people. People are questioning a lot of things about it. Um, and in Memphis and the police officers, I'm amazed that they arrested them so soon. And I heard are about, you? I'm yes, because think think I'm about George thinking. Floyd. Uh-huh. When, when, when did those police officers get arrested? I you mean, know? a while, but I, I can think I can think of a really big difference between these five and the ones I agree. Uh, that were involved in George in the George Floyd murder. So I didn't want it to mess up my weekend. Mm-hmm. And it kept popping up in my head watching news, some mm-hmm. clips of it, you know, can avoid it. I like to get online to read blogs and stuff, you know, but I watched it about an hour and a half ago. The video. The video. Oh, Harrison. It's, well, we were going to talk about it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I knew we were going to talk about it, but I didn't go watch. I'm just not, I can't watch. Yeah. We're going to talk I about the trauma and everything. Let me, let me tell you in the audience out there, it is as bad as people have described it. I, I have my brain spotting wound up here. Let me know if you if we need to do some brain spotting later uh, now that you've I'm okay watched the now, video. But I, okay. I, had to, I watched all of it too. And they have four different cameras. Each police officer had their own little body cam. And then somebody had a security cam on a house or something and had a big wide view. They beat the crap out of him. And um, there's no evidence to support their claim that he was driving recklessly. Um. And throughout the video, he appeared to be uh, complying and they just stopped them, yanked them out of the car. You know, the brutality of the blows, the language. And he kept asking, what did I do? What did I do? And he said, all right, you guys are doing a lot. And he was trying to lay down. They kept beating them. And at one point, he looked like he was running for his life. He was running from people who were trying to kill him. And he knew that. And they found them and they beat the crap out. They took turns beating the crap out of them. And then I saw the scene where he yelled out for his mom. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, my God, this is reminiscing of uh, George Floyd. Mm -hmm. Coincidentally, he was about 100 yards from his mom's house Mm -hmm. yelling out for help um, so that people can stop these police officers from uh attacking him it was brutal it was brutal the language was bad um the, uh, he, he looked scared he looked like a little kid he's a little skinny guy 155 pounds I did that, that he was slim yeah he, and he i mean they tore him up like a rag doll and so i i watched it it was difficult and now i understand why uh how other people are reacting to it and the trauma that is causing, you know, um, I have to face it if I'm going to talk about it on this show and with some of my clients and friends and colleagues, too. So I decided to watch it. It was brutal. 
it was bad uh, to watch how they mistreated him. So tonight, I wanted us to talk about, you know, what you know about the story, Aisha, mm-hmm. and then how do we handle, uh, once again, another black man dead at the hands of police officers, another black person, and um, how do we handle the scenes or just the news mm-hmm. of police officers targeting us? And if yeah. you watch it, how do you deal with that? Well, so as anyone who's watched this show knows, I don't watch the news. I have cable and I just, I don't do it. I actually only saw as much as I did about what happened when I went to NBC to find out uh, or to confirm that Michael B. Jordan was going to be on SNL. That's the only reason I was going to be watching network television. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's the truth. I don't watch network television. So I saw it and, and Marie has a question here. How do you feel about it being five black officers to this black, innocent black man? That was the first thing that I noticed. So, it's already disheartening that it happened, right? Yeah. And we could say police brutality, but I think often people have attributed police brutality to white police officers and black victims. In this case, it was five black men. Even with George Floyd, there were there was one who was maybe biracial and one yep, who was that's Asian correct. or something like and that. And the other one was Asian, yep. These were five all the way brown skinned black men like as far as i could tell unless there's an issue with my my bias and my sight they were african american men so they were negroes exactly and and there there's the first thing uh, when people ask the question about or rather you just asked the question you were surprised or you said you were surprised that they were arrested so quickly yeah i'm not it's five black men who apparently forgot that they were negro in the south now, I was born and raised, in case you can't tell, in case you have never heard or, or noticed that I have a Southern accent, born and raised in Alabama, and I've lived nowhere but Alabama and Georgia. And as much, Southern too. As, <laughs> as much as I want to believe that things have changed, uh, some things have gotten better, I never forget that I'm a Negro in the South. Maybe, but Atlanta metro area, uh, black Mecca, cool. But whenever I'm going through certain parts of Alabama, Georgia, Tennessee, Kentucky, yeah. But like I told Florida. some friends of mine, I grew up in Atlanta, I'm from Atlanta. Uh, I'm a southern boy, I love mm-hmm. the south, I don't want to live anywhere else. However, when you leave Atlanta, your ass is in Georgia, exactly. <laughs> when you leave the suburbs, that's not Atlanta anymore. Mm-mm. So there's no difference between rural Georgia and I would say rural Alabama or Tennessee or in South Carolina. They're all the same. Atlanta's just like a little island right in the middle of this mm-hmm. thing here. But sorry to interrupt you. No, no, it's fine because the, it's Memphis, Tennessee. That's where this was, right? Yes. And and so I have always said that Memphis was the Montgomery of Tennessee. I'm from Montgomery, Alabama. And, and we have this whole, it's almost country, a tad bit hood. Yep, uh, yep. But they've got, you know, some educated people. But, you Plus know. Plus of Atlanta's like that. Yep. Right. But, you know, but we're, we're no punks. Not in, in Montgomery and not in Memphis. So you just never know what you're going to get. So um, these, here, here's another thing that I found out yesterday because you said, what have I heard about it? Yeah. It's important to note that I am in a Greek letter organization. And so within the first hour of me hearing about it, what I found out was that three of the men were members of, um, I won't say the fraternity. Just Let's for, just say a black fraternity. Right. A, a, for, of a black fraternity, all members of the same black fraternity, um, particularly one that has been known for their uh, large amounts of hazing. Okay. Um, I and think so, all of them haze, but you know, but well, I, I'm, that's debatable. That's debatable. Okay. But <laughs> hazing's not a thing anymore, right? So, um, but it is remarkable, <clears throat> you know, that these are five black police officers. And mm-hmm. then to learn, like you, uh, as I was vo- avoiding the video, uh, it, I just saw the article that some of them were part, had pledged and joined a black fraternity, mm-hmm. worked their way through college to get degrees. You know, to only go out there and beat this black man like he wasn't worth a dime. That that is remarkable based on what you and I know 
about black fraternities. I never pledged anything, but I, I I respect them. I see what they're doing. You know, it just wasn't for me. Um, but uh, it is remarkable this turn from what you and I both know about black fraternities and sororities, and its focus on the black community, right. black uh, self improvement, service, service the black community, sisterhood, helping that was one remarkable. another. Yeah. But one of them, uh, reports said, had already had uh, reports of hazing at the school, at okay. the school where, where uh, at the university where he went to school. Gotcha. So he he already had a history of doing too much is the way I'll say it. Mm, he was crunk. <laughs> <laughs> doing like you're doing too much. And like although I haven't watched the video from what you said, it sounds like they were doing too much it went from doing a little bit too much to way too much to it's Tyree just got way Nichols out of control made ridiculous that statement you guys are doing too much as he was lying on the ground and they were punching and kicking him and one of them was holding him by the arm and telling him to lay down he said i can't because he was holding him in a position mm -hmm. where he could not lay down so, but to answer your question, Marie Jones, thank you for that question. You know, how do we feel about the fact that it's five black officers that did this to this innocent <laughs> black man? I, I, I have been told and counseling a few police officers over the years, you know, that that blue uniform, that shield supersedes race, community, socioeconomic status for some of them. Yeah. And then when they put on their uniform, they are part of their brotherhood mm -hmm. and they go along with their brotherhood because that's their home. That's their comfort. And that's why we see some black police officers doing some heinous crimes against other black folks. This isn't the first time, no. but I, I, I was truly disappointed not only to hear about a black man who was killed by police officers, but then to discover and those police officers were black. So so that, I hate to say it, but honestly, it blew me away. I'm watching the story, and then they put the pictures up there, and I'm like, clutching yep. my pearls. What the hell? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it was surprising. Man. Not, but, but, but one white guy came up and used a taser gun, you know, while they were beating them. And um, he wasn't arrested, but today he was released from the Memphis Police Department. You know, but but this this is all part of the dynamics of this story. You know, each of these things are unique. Brianna Taylor, coincidentally, she has the same birth date as uh, Tyree Nichols. I believe it is June the 5th, 1993. I put it on my Facebook earlier. Mm -hmm. We were talking about it earlier on Black Radio. I like to listen to. <laughs> um, but here, here we are in another situation. Black man dead in custody of the police officers. And this time, there's no evidence that he did anything wrong. He, he was complying. He, he did what, he, what they told him to do, and they took turns punching him full speed. And now to discover that some of them, I don't, I don't want to insult the fraternities because they have nothing to do with this, but just to discover that they were some of them were part of a black fraternity you know, and then to come out and do that, it, you know, convinces me the world has truly changed mm -hmm. uh, over the decade. And it was tough to watch. Um, if you cannot stomach it, um, I don't I don't encourage you to watch it. I don't think kids should watch it, but it does leave you changed. You know, now realizing if I get pulled over somewhere and it happens to be a black cop, I'm no longer safe. OK, I don't care what the cop looks like. Is that Make blue, sure there are people close by. That blue shield, because as a client told me, uh, they don't see black, white, Hispanic, Asian. They just see a perpetrator. Mm -hmm. And they're part of a group, and they're going to protect that group, and they're going to fit into that group. And many of them have anger issues. And let me tell you, I saw it on that video. Yeah. So it leaves some people traumatized. You know, it's triggering a lot of the trauma that some of us experienced doing George Floyd. I remember Rodney King 
you know, let me let me age myself. I, I was, was young, but I remember, you know, can we all just get along? That's, that's uh, I was in I remember the videos I, was, I was in college. Before cell phones, I, videos and, were out. And we thought, you know, and that's when they had the big camcorder. Mm -hmm. you have to, somebody grab one. Somebody it called it, right. Yeah. And, and, and the police officers were charged and they were found not guilty. Mm. And so um, here we are again, you know, with the situation. So that's what I want to ask even members of the audience and um you asia how do you know when this type of exposure is uh creating a harmful response something well, similar to ptsd outside of it creating a harmful res response with uh the trauma and with some ptsd is also creating harm um just when we were thinking about us, okay, okay, so I'm gonna go back two years sure. ago. Sure. You and I did an interview with a police officer. We um, did, yeah, you remember that? I remember uh, John, John Dargan face he to face in the studio, show. sure did in the mm -hmm. studio. And I remember one of the things because he, he's he was a little different because he was a preacher as well. That's correct. And one of the things he noted was that it makes it hard for them, himself, and the good cops when they're trying to do the best to show that, look, we care about the community. We want to keep you safe. And then somebody else comes in and does some stupid yeah. and not everybody else is afraid of them. He also said that in addition to that, it puts them in danger and they're already in danger being police officers. But when people are so mistrusting of the police, as soon as you pull them over, they're, re they're ready to shoot. They're ready to run. They're ready to run you over with a car because they think that you're going to kill them. Yeah. Um, I, I, what I do know is that um, Officer Dargan recently retired. And okay. that that was part of that. Things have become too dangerous for police because, you know, people coming at the police, police coming at people and, and things. It was just too much going on. Yeah. So he he he, he was labeled one of the bad guys. Right. Because there are so many. And when they do bad stuff, it's bad. I've heard it all from a client who used to run. He was a teenager. He used to run from police officers. And I was like, why are you running? <laughs> well, because well, that just wasn't a response that I would have if a police officer walked up to me and, and asked me a question. He took off running. And he looked at me like I was an alien. And he said, because they're going to beat me up and take my money and take my phone. And I was like. Damn. I also heard from another officer who talked about um, when his 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 partner and other police officers, when they would respond to a domestic violence uh, incident and he would end up putting the boyfriend or the husband in jail. The partner who was male, the police officer's partner would go back to the house when he got off work and had sex with the wife. I was like, what? <laughs> because they all knew the girlfriends or the wives were vulnerable mm. during that time and would take advantage of them um, and make some promises to them. And then he would, the partner would come back and tell the other guys. And then some other officer would go by the next day to check on the woman and see how she's doing and end up having sex with her as well. Th th those are the stories I have heard about police officers and it is scary and some of the things that i've heard from the clients that i talked to was some major anger issues but it's unfortunate like the police officer we had on the on the show years ago you know he has to deal with that yeah being labeled something that he's not but i remember him he told us he said you need to comply <laughs> he did because he, he said that he also knew police officers who were doing too much yeah yeah so so uh that that is unfortunate that um yeah that that badge the blue shield whatever they call it it supersedes everything else it makes you forget where you come from yeah. you know and when they steal money off people they share it with other police officers so that that stuff you see in the movies it is real mm -hmm. but now here we are having to deal with these images the video and even, you know, in the past, I've never been stopped a whole lot. But now, if it was a black police officer, I was never concerned. But now it's like, what's the damn difference between them and the other police officers? So so there's not. The only pol outside of the one we interviewed, I've known another police officer. And 
when we were younger, we were in our 20s and he was a police officer. He used to brag about, and it's funny that you, you had a teenager who said he would run, yep. beating a teenager. He passed out and when the, I mean, like beat him till he was knocked him out. And when the boy got up, he he act like he was taking care of him. Like, oh boy, you fail and hit your head on the concrete. Now, he would tell this story like it was nothing. Now, I won't tell exactly where, where he is, but what I will say is he has now with us almost being 40, he has moved through the ranks and he is very much at the top. That's how you do it. The po That's how you he do was it. never a good cop. In addition to that, before he was a police officer, he was a drug dealer. But now he is. Yes. But now he is at the top of his game um, in the field. So, so the question is, what do we do when the police officers are the demons? What when the police officers are the ones who will harm you, beat the pulp out of you, hit on you for sex after your husband beat you up. What are we to do now knowing that there are police officers out there who are not there to serve and protect us? That's the question I can answer to. Well, well is. I would say it's not just now. They're pro they are police officers now, but thinking about black men doing that to other black men uh, and having some semblance of power just has me thinking about an overseer attitude. It's Same just here. like the, it's just like the overseer. You know, so tell, you, can, you tell us what an overseer is. So an overseer historically for the, historically is um another slave on the plantation who has been given a little bit more power than the other slaves to make them do things so that the master doesn't have to do too much. He could beat them. Um, he could have whatever woman he wanted. He yep. got more food. He got more benefits. He had power and thought he was better, but in the end, he was still just another slave. Yeah, yeah And he, I mean, if he did something, he could also be beat that and is murdered and replaced, but, but he but, will but, forget sometimes that he was black. Absolutely. And he, he, he was in charge. Mm -hmm. uh, he coordinated things with the yeah. other slaves. He, he, he or she was usually the, the house Negro is the term that they use. And it was a movie, uh, Django Unchained with Jamie Foxx. Oh, yes. <laughs> and the <laughs> character played by Samuel L. Samuel Jackson. Jackson. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, that, that, that shows you that example. And you can fa fast forward more to the present time, you know, and um, companies that were traditionally white, you know, manufacturing companies, service oriented companies, and they have a, a lot of uh, black employees. They would put a black supervisor. Middle management. In, Middle management in charge because that black supervisor would mistreat the black employees. He or she would become the new overseer. He doesn't want to lose his job. He makes a little bit more money mm -hmm. and he knows and understands the black folks who are there. So there are many cases where they terrorize the black mm -hmm. employees. So now we got the police officers yeah. as the overseer brutalizing us. It's just a lot that I mean, there's just there are so many moving pieces here, because another thing that yeah. comes to my mind is the police chief there in Memphis. I just learned that she used to be um, in Atlanta and had some issues while she was in Atlanta as she was well. Fired. Is that what happened? I see. I knew you would know more because you're from, you know, to keep it with Atlanta politics like that. So remind us, Harrison, why was she fired? What did she do? So I read it on news on uh, online. Um, there was not a lot of details, but something about a botched um, investigation. That's the term that they use. OK, but she was fired and years ago and moved around and went to Memphis and has moved up uh, in Memphis. <clears throat> Coincidentally, how do you get fired and just go somewhere else and move up? Mm, police officers and teachers. Well, I mean, uh, I, you know what? It's the same way that people lose their kids in one state and, and go move to another state, and yeah. people act like the, they weren't the ever Catholic Church. They've been doing yeah. it for centuries. Um, but the funny thing is, you know, while the police officers were beating up uh, Tyree Nichols, there was no supervisor there in charge. There, the training of the police officers um, was not comprehensive uh, to allow them to be out there. Um, by themselves without any supervision. Um, so there's a lots of questioning questions about the structure of uh, the organization at Memphis. <clears throat> and so there's a lot of fingers being pointed at the police chief. I don't know if it's fair or not, you know, but uh, there is no reason. There was nobody there to stop them to say, hey, this is too much. 
And then finally, when the other police officers showed up and the EMT and they talked to him a little bit, took a while for him to show up and they didn't really give Ty Tyree the attention that he needed. So there's a lot of, like you said, moving pieces to this, yeah. a lot of dynamics. But now us, mm -hmm. we have to deal with it. Let's talk. Let's talk I mean, to you us. definitely do now that you watch the video because, you know, I'm it's still horrible. not watching. It's I horrible. Just, I can't let that in my spirit and in my head. It's horrible. And I watched Game of Thrones every season and saw the brutality of that show. But I <laughs> knew like, this is worse. I knew it was, this was fiction. Mm -hmm. But when you see someone holding someone's hands behind their back, standing up and another police officer swings at him and his neck snaps back. And you can see him wobble and he does it twice. Then that's when you I'm like, no, oh. he's weaker than you physically He's i mean any guy legally you all are the police you have all the power you have all the physical strength you have the numbers which also i'm thinking how did five police officers get? now first gang. of all that pisses me off anyway when i see somebody get pulled over and then here comes another police car and here comes A another police car. why are all of y'all here but apparently he stopped Tari stopped when they pulled them over and they all ran to the car, a couple of them yelling, cussing, and yanked him out of that car. He kept asking, what did I do? What did I do? And that's how it all started. So coincidentally, there are some questions about a couple of the police officers and whether or not this was personal. Okay, so I was wondering that too. And I'm tr is it going to come out later? Because... I also know that there are some police officers who do that, pass on tag numbers, coming after certain people for different things. You know, it's like somebody calls their cousin who's a police police officer and my cousin's going to get you. What's happening that we don't know? So a, uh, I know someone <laughs> okay. who's a police <laughs> officer and he, he, and they're all talking about it. Yeah. And, um, he heard through the grapevine that one of the police officers' uh, ex-girlfriend had known or had gone out on a date with Tyree. I said, now, is that rumor or is there some fact behind that? He said, right now, there's some evidence to show that he mm -hmm. knew the girl and that they're all about the same age. Memphis is not a huge city. This is true. Know. It's and not, I, not and, big. They know each other. And, and as I watched the video, I wondered that. Uh, as when I, saw, I heard you telling me, I thought that. Like, that sounds personal. There was one ringleader, and the others just jumped in. There was a couple of ringleaders. One of them was particularly brutal to him, and I didn't understand. The man had on handcuffs. He was on the ground, and you're still kicking him. You're still telling the other guy to hold him up and you punched him while his hands were behind his back. I was like, something is not right here. They're, they're doing more than trying to arrest somebody. There's no drugs found. No drugs in his system. I have since found out he's a photographer. He likes to skateboard. He likes to watch sunsets. I, I you know. It's, it's a little bit confusing, but when you add that extra element, which is a rumor, I have to say that, you know, it does make you wonder, you know, was all this over a chick? When you told me what was happening, I wonder if all of this was over a chick. Mm. Mm. An ex. <laughs> guys do stupid stuff. I agree with that. I agree with that. <laughs> So and, let's and have... the, the fact that three three of them were in the same fraternity made me think that's mm. that he called his homeboys. Isn't that peculiar? You didn't just peculiar. call you just call a bunch of police officers. You called two of them who were your frat brothers, and the other two who were your homies. And who knows? Maybe they were yeah, hoping and, to get and the they may have wanted to be a part later. of it. Yep. They want to belong mm -hmm. to the little group. You they know, sure did. they want to be one of the bros. Yep. You know, and they got the blue uniform on. Mm -hmm. I know, but um. To swing us back around, let's talk to some of the listeners who are having some issues stomaching uh, and processing some of this, you know, because a lot of people, they don't understand about trauma, uh, distress uh, in the body and how it responds and more importantly, what to do 
You know, I think before George Floyd, I didn't have a problem watching some of those videos whenever it happened. George Floyd was tough to watch. Uh, I was really uh, unhappy that my daughter saw it. <laughs> that caused a lot of conversations. But now I'm hearing a lot of people are feeling troubled by mm -hmm. this. What can you tell us? How can people recognize when they're truly having problems with something similar to PTSD? So that's a difficult one because I can say be on the lookout for um, symptoms of anxiety. But the truth is anxiety yeah. has been going up for a while anyway because of COVID and because of politics. So be on the lookout for the stuff we were looking out for before and be on be on the lookout for changes in appetite and sleep. But, oh, guess what? That's been going on, too. Yeah. Because yeah. of everything that's happening. I could tell you to be proactive, but we've learned in the last few years to be proactive about everything. Be proactive about your money. Be proactive about your housing purchases. Otherwise, you'll lose out on it. Be proactive when it comes to the police. I hate that this young man pulled over where there was no one around because I have the only time I've had many police come up it was because I I, I was speeding or missed mm -hmm. the light or something but yep. when they tried to pull me over I kept on driving you're not gonna get me over here and you there's nobody here I'm pulling place. up close to some I don't care if it's 10 police cars there will be people around to see what all 10 police cars do but you're thinking I didn't do anything wrong so yep. You know, yep. maybe they're pulling me over because I missed the stop sign or something. It can't yep. be that big of a deal. Yeah. Yeah. Surely he sees that I'm not armed, but maybe I should tell him, you know, but I'm looking at him like this happened to me years ago. Why is his hand on his gun? You know, he hadn't pulled the clip yet. When that I ran happened to me, too. <laughs> I ran through a red light. You know, I, I did it. You know, I know. And I deserved a ticket and I paid it. But let me tell you, that was scary as hell as the police officer walked up from behind my car with his hand on his gun. I'm like, what? I think what? about that too. Cause I was mouthy when that happened to me. I Cause my, my, my <laughs> sorority frame was covering the expiration sticker on my thing. And he was coming up. Yeah. And when I rolled down the window, I said, what, well, what happened? And he said, your frame was covering the thing or whatever. And I said, did that require you to put your hand on your gun? Like, why are you coming up on me? Like I was real mouthy. Today, I mean, that worries me. I totally could have been shot because yeah. um, he was young and he was he yeah. looked like he was scared. And if was I he moved black or him, white? He was black. My 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 officer was black too, and he he asked me about running the red light, and I said, "Well, I have a different approach." Like, Are you sure I ran the red light? <laughs> I knew I, I ran like, it, but 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 here and, we in are. In fact, I was like, I got a screwdriver right over here in the glove compartment. Can I just get out and unscrew it? I mean, like, I just didn't care. That was dangerous. Yeah. Looking back on it, yeah. Now nowadays, we we have to be fearful of police officers and as long as they're wearing that uniform they're all the same mm -hmm. you know i think it's time for us to stop making assumptions that because they might look like us or we have some shared ancestry um or they be maybe they're from the same neighborhood you know it doesn't matter um they're all going to act the same way with that and I liked all the things that Dr. Aisha talked about, you know, pay attention to your anxiety. But it's been there for a while through the, through the pandemic, you know, some de depressive thoughts, your mood changes in your mood, whether it's up or high, you know, uh, your thoughts and uh, inability to control your thoughts. Um, or maybe you just can't stop thinking about it. Definitely. If you watch the video and the scenes pop up in your, your dreams, you know, that's another sign. You mentioned appetite whether it increases or decreases, but a total shift in your mood. That is certainly something that uh, you need to pay attention to. And even when I'm thinking about anxiety, I worry that people are going to be trying to think of other ways to protect themselves. Because what I have yeah. heard a lot from in the black community is that if I'm being robbed or if something's happening, I wouldn't call the police. I'm like, really? You wouldn't? What would you? Because the police will kill them and me. Yeah, yeah. You got to be mean, careful. Right. Because so what they do you may... do now? You just buy a gun. You kill them yourself. How yeah, but but do? there's a reality. I've heard from people. You call the police. They may think that you're the perpetrator. This if is If you true. call that someone's breaking into your house or your car and you standing out there with a the cell phone in your hand, they may think you're the one who uh, caused all the problems. 
and they do and they get confused oh here's here's another story when i was in my 20s i had a little townhouse and i don't know what was happening somewhere in the neighborhood but the police knocked on my door because they heard there was a disturbance in the house and i was like sleepy no there's no disturbance here they knocked the door open like they were coming to save me and then all of a sudden somebody else was like no is this how? and then they walked out but you know already knocked me down and ran to my house and everything yeah it's nobody so here for me have a comment from a listener. These officers that were caught are the typical black officers in the nation. Damn. Mm. Very few are in it to protect, serve, and change. Well, damn, Black Pat. That, but but you know what? The man. That's 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 a reality that we may need to face. You know, I'm still holding on to Officer Friendly when I was in the third grade. And they used to come <laughs> talk to us at right. my elementary school. Mine was a, a little... friend of mine's dad. He used to come talk to us too about that's drugs. What they, that's what they called him, Officer Friendly. You know, and so, but now it turned from Officer Friendly to, oh, those particular officers. I better watch out for that to now. It's like all of them. It doesn't really matter, but that is a strong statement. Very few are in it to protect, serve, and change. Well, Black Pat, if you're still here, why do you think they're in it? If they're not there to protect, serve, and change, is it just for a paycheck or yep. is it to beat people down and get their yeah, Put it in the chat. Let us know because you seem to know a little bit more about that than we do. All I know is some of them are scary as hell, you mm. know, and I don't, I don't want to come up against them. Now, we got to be cautious, you know, if we get into a car accident or we, 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 we get a traffic ticket, you know, now we, we got to be cautious. You know, I remember going to a church program years ago where the police officers came out and told us what to do if we ever stopped. It's a black church. And, mm -hmm. you know, and it was it was insulting, you know, the things that they told us to do. Yell out the car with our hands out the window. Tell them I'm not armed. You know, tell them I'm not uh, resisting. And I'm like, but I've never had to do that before. Why do, why do I have to do that? When, when there are other folks who yell at the police officers, you know, they, they curse them out. They you know, sure do. And, and they, they don't they don't get harmed. You know, some of them may get arrested in an extra ticket. But but we we, we got a fear for our lives. And I think that is completely unfair. And I don't want to do it. But we're going to have to face some realities mm -hmm. uh, that are out there. So let us know, uh, Black Pat, the man. Uh, what, what are your theories behind that? But I do encourage everybody to um, protect yourself. I watched the video because uh, we were doing this show and I have some clients who want to talk about it. They're being triggered. You know, it's bringing up some past experiences and it's, it's heightening that anxiety you talked about, you know, because it was just simmering and manageable now until the video. And some of them, they have sons. Uh, black sons who are college age and ain't worried about them. So mm -hmm. I had to watch the video. But if you don't have to watch it, don't watch it. It's 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 not good. It's it's horrible. Um, and I, I think I missed the last five minutes of it. I just couldn't stomach it. You know, it's how hard. long is it? Well, there are well, that five minutes is a long time. How long is this video? Each each um officer had a cam, the court okay. the, the video on and it yeah. showed it together and then somebody's home security on their house had a camera right over the whole thing it was a wide angle and so you get to see the whole thing as opposed to a little narrow shot you know trying to wonder well, what is he doing the widescreen uh, view uh sees it so the whole thing's almost an hour so um, so that that also uh kind of debunks the myth that Arming all of the police officers with body cams is going to cut down on police brutality. And <laughs> no, I almost cursed. <laughs> no. They didn't get that. That's what body cams are for. Yep. Excuse me. That's, and, that's why. And dash cams. It's supposed to make yep. police not do stupid stuff because you know it's going to be recorded. And so care. then it's like, okay, these five black men were extra ignorant. They you didn't knew care. you had a whole camera. You, you had cameras on and you just. What, you had cameras on and what did you think? That. The system was going to protect you again you forgot you were black yep yep and and they can they don't care and they can get away with certain things like stopping somebody for no reason and then beating the crap out of them uh and they and even afterwards when more police officers showed up in the emt they were all casual they were out of breath you know they were bragging about what they had done um so it, it was all of that you know made me even more fearful even if i do complain what are they going to do about it even if there is a video you know they they don't care 
So I suggest everybody, if you don't have to watch it, don't watch it. It's, it's horrible, but we're going to have to continue these conversations in the black community about how do we deal with um, police brutality and uh, somebody targeting us like a bully, like a gang, when possibly we haven't done anything wrong. Even if we have done something wrong, we, we deserve to get a ticket or get arrested. That's it. You know, we, we don't deserve to die. We do. Right. We do not deserve to die. And who, who's the black woman in Texas? She, Sandra Bland. Yes. She died in, in custody of the police. So these are just some examples that are out there. You know, I thought about when, when you told me that he had the same birthday as um, Breonna Taylor. Yep. Uh, my sister and I talk about uh, after you get to 365 people, at some point, somebody's going to have a few people are going to have the same birthday. Yep. Which, That's you know, true. we've we've had enough black people die. Um, because of police brutality and because of racism and a bunch of other stupid stuff that at this point, people are going to start having the same birthdays. I, I, we, the I numbers agree. have gotten too high. It's it's peculiar um, and it's stirring up some conspiracies <laughs> that are out there. And um, I know people who are into the numbers and mm, okay. what they mean. And so it's like a sign for some people um but nevertheless that is a reality that is out there so any final words for our uh audience and dealing with that and being triggered and whether or not they should watch the video (laughs) i'm still gonna say don't watch the video but also if also if you have now you need to do something to take care of yourself and get yourself back in a a relaxed stable mental position a, a, a place that's not as negative and aggressive that's why i match all that aggression and hate getting yeah. into your head through your eyes it's time for you to do something to um, get rid there. of that meditate I mean, and i heard something new over the weekend uh healing circles you know i saw something about healing circles ch- ch- check it out i haven't heard of it i've never done it i'm not i'm not promoting it you know i just read about it and i the, it sounds like a great idea from what I read on the internet. And there's some places in Atlanta that are doing it. One place in particular is just for black men. They have okay. circles just for black men. I tried to get them on a show tonight, but they did not get back with me. Uh, but but you're right. Self-care is important and protecting your spirit, protecting your peace. Uh, and now we got to protect our bodies. And uh, women maybe don't, don't date police officers either. Because, you know. <laughs> they and might fi- hurt you they might hurt somebody that you date later on in life too apparently and finally i heard some uh sad news today about a very popular radio dj i know you know him uh asia because he's from alabama mm-hmm. uh ricky smiley's son uh i believe his name is brandon brandon mm-hmm. re- yeah he died there's not a whole lot of information about it yeah. but boy when i looked at those uh, videos that Ricky Smiley did. I think he did, he did two that last one. He looked awfully sad. Yeah. Uh, he, he, he looked broken. Um, so I want to send out my condolences to uh, Ricky Smiley. Isn't this his second child? He's something, a, a, so. a daughter who was caught up, was shot um years know. ago near a club i didn't do my research. oh yes 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 i do remember but sh- she's alive but yes oh. i do remember her being shot mm-hmm. and, te- and when she was in college mm-hmm. okay okay you're right so she survived okay so mm-hmm. he yeah so he kept talking about and i agree with him no one should have to bury yeah. a child and uh i hope uh ricky you're taking care of yourself because that last video you made you did not look good brother you know right the you, first one it was like he was it looked like he was strong for everybody and he was hitting them now, well the I second think. one he admits he said today feels different mm-hmm. you know and he mentioned depression and he can barely get his words out you know so ricky take care of you and your family you don't you don't have to you don't have to share all of this on social media yes. um because what i saw you you needed time to yourself so either way uh, I hope you guys enjoyed today's show. Uh, I'm talking about racial trauma, police officers, police brutality, you know, some realities that are out there. They're not pretty realities, you know, but it's not in our best interest to be delusional um, about some of these realities. We got to come up with a plan. We have to know what to do if we ever stopped by a police officer. And I believe Dr. Asia and I, you know, we're here to say it doesn't matter if they're black, white, Hispanic, Asian, 
that that blue that uniform um is all that we need to see um and these can be dangerous times out there so that's my final word on it we've been watching two therapists and a microphone i am dr harrison davis and i'm dr asia dickerson we will see you guys next time monday night at seven o'clock p.m see ya Yeah.